So we've worked out the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix and remember that we checked that it worked. Computing the inverse of matrices by hand is only recommended for up to 3 by 3 at least unless they've got lots of zeros or in some way very simple. Uh, and 2 by 2 you generally just use the formula rather than thinking of it as cofactors. If A inverse exists then um, the debt of A times A inverse is the debt of the identity, uh, which is 1. So that means that the debt of the inverse of the matrix must be 1 over the determinant, the reciprocal of the determinant. Um, also, if A inverse exists, then um, if AC equals AD, then C equals D. In other words, if there is an inverse, then you can cancel the matrix. And you can actually cancel that on either side. It's, it's just that we multiply both sides by A inverse and then we get C equals D. And uh, of course you can do that with the A on the other side as well. So in summary, um, a cofactor is plus or minus the minor with the plus or minus sign going in a pattern like the black and white squares on a chessboard. Um, the cofactor matrix C is a matrix whose elements are the cofactors, so they're the determinants of the minors with the checkable plus or minus sign. We get a determinant by summing along any row or any column, um, uh, the elements of that row and column times the cofactors that you form from deleting them. If determinant is zero, the matrix is singular, and then you can't invert it. It has no inverse. When there is an inverse, then uh, you get that by taking the transpose of the cofactor matrix. And if you remember in the two by two case, that actually puts the numbers on the half diagonal back where they were. Um, and then you divide by the determinant. And so actually, if, if the matrix just got whole numbers in, it's when you divide by the determinant that you get fractions in it. Inverses allow you to solve um, simultaneous equations such as ax equals b, you can do that by just a inverse b. So the advantage of, of this over solving a system of equations by the usual way that you know is that once you've got the a inverse it will work for any right hand side b vectors that you like. So for example you might have analysed an electrical network with fixed values of resistors and that will give you a way of solving, for example, um, uh, if you know the voltages and you want the currents, you might have to invert a matrix. And then if you have some different voltages, then you just apply the inverse of the matrix you've calculated. So you don't have to uh, resolve the system of equations. Let's do another quick example. This is only going to be a short video. Here's a matrix and we want the inverse. First of all, is it invertible? So it's kind of interesting, isn't it? You can, you, you, you think, oh, um, is there some relationship between the first two rows? And, and no, there isn't because of that three. Um, so, uh, so it looks like probably it is going to be invertible. But the, the trick to make it easy is to, to work out the term by going along this row. Because it's zero times something minus zero times something. I don't care what something is if it's multiplied by zero at the moment. And so all I need to do is work out one times the determinant of that, or, or actually, as soon as I've worked out the determinant of this, I, I know that the matrix is invertible. So two times one minus minus two times one, the minus and the minus come together. And so we, we get a determinant of, of four. So that's not zero. So it has an inverse. And what we've got to do is find it. So let's calculate some cofactors. Um, so the cofactors are plus and minus the, the minors. And notice uh, it goes plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, and so on. Um, so these minors we get by crossing out the corresponding row and column and working out the two by two determinant. So I'm laying it out like this. Uh, that uh, the, the matrix we get by crossing out the first row and first column is this one, 1 minus 3, 0, 1. 
and so on. So these are the two by two determinants and the, the, the red negative signs there, they give you the checkerboard and plus or minus signs. So the cofactor matrix is this and um, you know, it's, it's weirdly got a couple of zeros there. Uh, maybe it's not so weird actually, um, but um, it doesn't look like the original matrix. But to get the, the, the inverse, what we've got to do is transpose this. So of course the diagonal thing's all the same, but that minus one goes up to there and that two goes down there. It's the transpose of the cofactor matrix. And just keep track of it. It's probably worth writing it down in these separate steps. So one over the term and one over four. So some of the numbers work out as still whole numbers, but you know, that's a half, that's a half, and that's a quarter. And these are the numbers that you, you get. If you are solving the simultaneous equations, at some point you have to divide by something. Okay, so that should be the inverse. We should check it. We should always check it. It's much easier to multiply two in matrices together. And not only that, that if it's partly right, you, you get to spot where your mistakes are actually. So A times A inverse, you could actually just as well do A inverse times A. Uh, it's just as good a check. And so, um, we take out the quarter and actually what you see is everything comes out to either four or zero. So you see it's two times one plus one times two, that's four divided by four, it's one and so on. So you can see that that works and we haven't made any mistakes to, to be honest, practically, I would usually make a couple of mistakes somewhere and so it's well worth checking.